Hey everyone, it's Jackie, and I'm going to be teaching you how to do a wet on wet technique with watercolor. Today we're going to be painting a watermelon. So the first step for doing this is you're just going to get your brush wet with just water, make sure it's clean, and you're going to paint out the shape of a triangle on your paper. And you can kind of see the reflection here. And give it a little bit of a curved edge like you would see on a slice of a watermelon. Make sure the brush is really wet and you're going to fill in the shape of the triangle. Okay, now that your triangle is filled in with water, I'm just going over it a couple times to make sure there's enough water in the triangle. You're going to take a red color or a pink and you're going to get a lot of it on your brush and you're just going to dip in the wet brush right into where the color is and it'll kind of splash out like that as you can see and this is basically the wet on wet technique it's called this because you're putting wet paint into a wet paper surface and then it spreads out like that what I recommend doing for the watermelon in particular is really starting up at the top because that way it gets lighter as it goes down and it, there's more color at the top because the watermelon it has like a white color at the bottom and the base of the slice and this way it'll kind of mimic this with the, the piece. So I'm just going to get more water and just try to just blend it all out just letting it drip and do its thing because I think that gives it the coolest effect. And it's okay if your paper gets a little wrinkly or bumpy. That's the nature of adding a lot of water onto it. If you want to prevent this, you can always lay it down or hold down the paper. But I'm letting mine just get like this because when it dries, it'll come back overall to be pretty flat. Um, now, a good technique I've learned is that if your brush is wet, once you dry it off, so that it's all clean, you can pick up a bit of the droplets that are hanging and you just use a dry brush to do that. You also could use paper towel, but I like to keep it all consistent and just keep using my paintbrush for everything. And look, you're already starting to see it come together. Darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. I want mine to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna go back in and just filling in my shape. And I really love the variation in color uh, the ombre effect it gives, I think it all just looks really neat together and it blends together really nicely. Right now I'm just going through and I'm fixing the shape a little bit, making sure it looks the way I want it to, refining the edges. Awesome. So now you're going to wait a second to make sure the paper gets fully dried before we move on to our next part. So the next step you're going to do is you're going to clean off your brush, make sure it's all clear again, and you're going to take just water like we did in the very beginning, and you're going to paint the rind of the melon. So we're going to do the exact same technique and do the wet on wet. So we're going to take just water and we're going to paint it right underneath the end of the pie-shaped piece, the end of the triangle. I'm going to keep it round. I'm choosing to keep a little bit of space between the color red area and then the water because I want my green to be separate to have that white in the middle. But you can have it connect and blend together. I know that also looks really neat. And now you're going to take green, any shade of green you'd like, get it on your brush, and you're going to do the same thing you did before and drop it in there and let it do its thing. And then I'm letting it pull up a little bit on the bottom because the darkest part would be the bottom part. So if I let the paint go down a little bit, 
And then as we learned in our last video, if you want to make a color darker, you just add less water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same green, or you can use a darker shade of green if you have it, and you're going to uh, just do the same drops but towards the very bottom of it, just to make the rind look even darker. Oops. You can kind of see it coming together now. It's starting to look like a watermelon. I'm drying it off. I'm going to do what I did before because I have a big blob right here and just with a dry brush take it out. But not too much because I still want to have that darker color. And the last step we're going to do is just add in the seeds. So you can take a black color or whichever dark color you prefer. And since the top of the melon or the red part should be dry by now, uh, you don't have to worry about it blending out too much or spreading like it did with the water. And you just go in and you draw on your seeds. So now I'm all done with my watermelon. I hope you guys like how yours turned out and you learned something new with this wet on wet technique and you'll use this when working on more projects in the future because I think it gives an awesome texture to whatever you're drawing.